Edward VIII is famous for making what is regarded as one of the most romantic gestures of all time, abdicating in favor of marrying the woman that I love, the American divorcee Wallace Simpson. His declaration was made official when they tied the knot on June 3, a date insensitively chosen according to Andrew Loney, writing in his 2021 book Traitor King, for it was his brother King George VI's birthday. The royal family were not in attendance, with the event somewhat overshadowed by the news which had arrived days before, Wallace would not be granted the title of Her Royal Highness upon their marriage. The Duke was furious, with M. R. Loney quoting a diary entry from Lady Alexandra Curzon, commonly known as Baba Metcalf, saying, There is bitterness there all right. Baba, who was married to the Duke's best man and attended the humble wedding ceremony, sensed negativity on the wedding day too, describing how she struggled to stop herself from crying, suggesting that Wallace did not love Edward equally. The best man Edward Dudley Metcalf, known as Fruity was an officer in the Indian Army and a close friend of the Duke of Windsor. In fact, Edward once wrote to him deploring how much he was missing him, describing him as his greatest man friend. Fruity was therefore made his best man and his wife Baba, a daughter of George, Lord Curzon of Kettleston, former Viceroy of India, accompanied him to the wedding. But she did not warm to Wallace, noting that the socialite barely appeared to look as though she loved Edward. She wrote, if she occasionally showed a glimmer of softness, took his arm, and looked at him as though she loved him, one would warm towards her but her attitude is so correct and hard. The effect is of an older woman unmoved by the infatuated love of a younger man. Let's hope that she lets up in private with him, otherwise, it must be grim. The Duke and Duchess's wedding at the Chateau de Cannes, France was a small affair of twenty guests. Just seven of the attendees were British as close members of the royal family were forbidden from attending and friends and former advisers were warned not to go, M. R. Loney writes. Although the press was not allowed to photograph the wedding, Time magazine covered the scaled-back event, describing the Duke as hollow-eyed when Wallace walked down the aisle to the wedding march from Handel's Judas Maccabeus wearing a soft blue crepe with a tight, buttoned bodice. Baba's negativity continued as she described the chateau as ugly and the people there except H.R.H. unattractive. She was moved by the entire event and found it difficult to hold show affection towards Wallace. She continued, it was hard not to cry. In fact, I did. Afterwards, we shook hands in the salon. I knew I should have kissed her. But I just couldn't. She added, in fact. I was bad all day, my effort to be charming and to like her broke down. I don't remember wishing her happiness or good luck as though she loved him. The whole event was wrapped up by 3.15pm and Wallace wandered into the garden with Edward's advisor Walter Monckton who warned that she would be heavily scrutinized in light of the sacrifice. Her now husband had made. She appeared well aware of this as she turned to him and said, Walter, don't. You think I have thought of all that? I think I can make him happy. Their relationship was under a great deal of pressure from then on, as M. R. Loney noted, it was a marriage that could not afford to fail. The price had been too high. Historians have suggested that Wallace was unhappy in the marriage, exchanging letters with her ex-husband Ernest Simpson years after marrying Edward, including on their honeymoon. M. R. Loney writes that the Duke and Duchess's marriage was quite the contrary to a great romance it has come to be thought as, Wallace was emotionally blackmailed into marriage, only sticking with it because she had no other option. While it suggested that Wallace engaged in affairs,